Today I'm going to give a presentation on Napier's bones. So, who is Napier and why are his bones so important? Well, this is Mr. John Napier, and these are his famous bones. Ah, just kidding. These are the bones in question. The bones were used for making multiplying large numbers quicker and less mathematically challenging, but back to Napier for a little bit. John Napier was a Scottish mathematician and theological writer during the late 15th, early 16th centuries. One of his biggest contributions was creating the concept of logarithms as a mathematical device in calculation. His bones, or otherwise known as rods, also helped in making calculations easier. They were created so that the person calculating only needed to know how to add. So, next question, how do these bones work? The rods or the bones were essentially multiplication tables inscribed on sticks of wood or bone. These ones right here. Napier created the rods in sets of 10 rectangular blocks with multiples of a different digit on each of the four sides. Not having a set of my own, I decided to make some out of paper and back them with a little foam so that they would be a little bit easier to move around while I show you how they work. Let's e examine some of the bones. Notice that, except for the numbers on top here, each of these squares underneath are cut by a diagonal. As each number is multiplied, the product will be written as a two-digit number written on either side, the tens place and the ones place will be written on either side of the diagonal. So let's look at four. I'm sorry if this is a little difficult to see on the camera, but I will try my best to help you see this. Okay. This bone over here to the left is used as a guide to show you the multiples of the digit on top of each bone. So four times two is eight, but since it needs to be a two digit representation, we have zero tens on the left side of the diagonal and eight ones on the right side of the diagonal. Also with four times six, which is 24, we have two tens on the left side of the diagonal and four ones on the right side of the diagonal. The product will never be greater than 91, sorry, 81, since nine times nine is the greatest product that we can use. So we never really have to worry about running into a three digit number and needing a spot to put the hundreds place digit. So by now you've probably noticed that each bone contains multiples of the number indicated by the top square. Hence, this would be the multiples of four. One, four, two, fours, three, fours, four, fours, etc. as you go down. So now that we know what these bones look like, let's try to multiply something with them. Okay, I'm gonna to try to multiply 2,571 by eight. So I'll use my little guide over here to look at the eighth row of 2,571, or the eighth multiple of 2,571 over here. Now notice that when you put these rods together, or these bones together, a little parallelogram will form by the diagonals of the boxes. Each of these parallelograms represents a number place. So starting from right to left, the numbers will be read as eight ones, six tens, five hundreds, and now we have 10, six plus four, 10 one thousands, or just as we do when we're adding with columns, use the zero to hold the place and add another one to the 10 thousands column to get 20,568. Notice how we never actually had to use any multiplication. All we had to do was know how to add. Okay, so let's do a slightly harder product. I'm going to try to multiply 
4,138 by 567. Let's write that up here so we don't forget it. Now you might ask, well, where are we getting this 567 from? What we can do is examine the fifth, sixth, and seventh row. Because what we are actually going to do is break it down a little and multiply 500 times 4,138, 60 by 4,138, and then 7 by 4,138, and then add them all together. So let's look at the five, col the five row first and start adding our numbers like we did before. So we have a 0, a 9, a 6, a 0, and a 2. Now I'm going to start adding the numbers for the sixth row, but this time I'm going to start one more place value over to the right, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So first we have an 8, then we have a 12, so use the 2 to hold the place, and then bring a 1 over to the next place value, so now we'll have 6 plus 1 plus 1, we get 8, we have a 4, and then a 2. Again, for the seventh row, I'm going to start counting starting at one placement to the right. So we have a 6, a 6, a 9, an 8, and a 2. Now I moved each row over one place value because really remember, for the first, for the first one that we counted up, the 5 row, we actually multiplied 4,138 by 500, not just 5. So we have two extra zero placeholders. For the next row, we actually multiplied it by 6D, not just 6. So again, we have to add another placeholding zero. So now we can just add up all of these numbers. And let's just do this quick. One, two. And we get 2,346,246. Now, this product or this example might not have seemed as efficient and effort saving, but as I mentioned before, only addition was needed to carry out these calculations, so you could see why these bones became a little popular. Okay, so now comes the time to show you why these bones actually work. Start with a clean slate. Let's look at that first product that we started with. It was eight times two thousand five hundred and seventy one. So Napier's bones essentially create an easy to read table for what we know as the partial products, meaning that we can use the reverse of the distributive property to split 2,571 into its thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones digit places, then multiply each of those by eight and add them up. So we started with eight times 2,571. That can be broken down into 8 times 2,000 plus 500 plus 70 plus 1. Can break it down even further into 8 times 2,000 plus 8 times 500 plus 8 times 70 and finally plus 8 times 1. Now we can multiply these out and then add them up. So first we get 16,000 plus 4,000 
plus 560 plus 8. Add them all up and we're going to get our same answer of 20,568. Now notice in the eighth row of 2,571 we can actually see the partial products. We can see 8 times 2,000 is our 16,000 right there. Then we had 8 times 500 was our 4,000. 7 times, sorry, 70 times 8 was our 560. And then finally, 1 times 8 was our 8. So the way that the numbers are organized in the parallelograms allows you to add the numbers within the same place value, just as if we wrote them in columns as we usually do. So, finally, how can knowing Napier's bones enrich students' learning and their appreciation of mathematics? Let's clear this off for a little second. Knowing how it's possible for Napier, excuse me, knowing how it's possible for Napier's bones to work is a key factor in understanding how lattice multiplication works as well, since they are alarmingly similar in process. Lattice multiplication also creates a table with rows and columns split by diagonals for the process of holding place values while you add. To be honest, it looks just like Napier's bones, except you just hone in on the specific rows you are multiplying by. So let's try a new product. Let's try 27 times 48. First, oh, and I know that this is 1,296. So what you first do to set up a lattice multiplication is to write the 2 and the 7 in different columns. Actually, let's move this up a little. We're going to run out of room on the bottom. Okay, the 2 and the 7 go in their own columns. And then also, the 4 and the 8 need their own rows. Again, we have to draw the diagonals. And just like in Napier's bones, we're going to get a two-digit product when we multiply any of the columns by a row. We're going to also keep, and sorry, we're going to also keep the tens to the left of the diagonal and the ones to the right of the diagonal within that product number. Now, remember we can do this because each diagonal represents a different place value. For example, this diagonal right here represents the one section. This one right here is the tens. This one here is the hundreds. And this last one, as you can guess, is the thousands. 